Hey everybody, it's AJ from Disney Food Blog, and oh my goodness, I just got back from Pixar Pier, and I'm so excited to tell you all about it. Pixar Pier, in case you didn't know, used to be Paradise Pier over in Disneyland's Disney California Adventure theme park, and now it is Pixar themed after all the films. So much fun. We got in a couple of days early, and it's been a blast, so let's talk about the whole thing. Pixar Pier is separated into four different sections. There's Incredibles Park, the Pixar Promenade, Toy Story Boardwalk, and Inside Out Headquarters. And of course, there's an entry area where there's a restaurant and a store as well. Overall, it looks just like Paradise Pier, but it's better. So it's better themed. It's really, really nice to see recognizable characters and recognizable themes in this area of the park. Cause they, it was just kind of quote unquote California boardwalk themed before. So it's nice to sort of have a real Disney touch to this. The new food is a fun addition. We'll talk about that in a second. The ride enhancements are really, really well done. And they're actually going to bring two brand new rides in. Well, I guess one's an enhanced ride, but one is going to be a brand new ride coming in in 2019. And I really like the character interaction that's been added on the pier as well. There's some really fun new characters that we've never seen before. And that's a blast to sort of hang out with them over there on the pier. So let's get started. First up, we're going to talk about rides. And of course, we have to hit the Incredicoaster first. The Incredicoaster used to be California Screamin'. They haven't changed the ride track at all. It's essentially the same ride, but it's completely Incredibles themed at this point. And it's focused a little bit more on Incredibles 2. You've got the Jack Jack backstory along the whole coaster. And of course, the major focus on cookies. I love this ride. I, I liked California Screamin' as well, but I really think there's a lot added with all of the extra extra character involvement and the backstory going on kind of behind you in your ear. <laughs> I, of course, I love Holly Hunter. Anything the Holly Hunter does, I'm, I'm in. So it's really fun to hear her talking in the background. Dash does the countdown now. You know, California Screaming needs to have a countdown. Well, Dash does it now. So it's really fun. Five, four, three, two, one, go! <laughs> It's a blast and don't forget they do pump that cookie smell into the ride so you're going to be craving cookies when you get off which is why they have of course a cookie stand at the end which we'll talk about in just a second so in credit coaster it was totally fun i really really hope you get to enjoy it but let us know in the comments did you like it what did you think was it different from what you expected from california screaming still a great ride really really like the theme makes it kind of a cohesive and coherent ride at this point other rides, the Pixar Pal Around. This is, of course, the giant Ferris wheel. There are 24 gondolas on this, and there are Pixar Pals on either side. So Mike and Sully are on one, and you've got Mater and Lightning, and you get it. There's Pals on either side of the gondola. It's the same ride, essentially, as it was before. There are swinging and non-swinging gondolas, so you can choose which one you want to ride. Still terrifying, still an absolutely terrifying ride. <laughs> if you are in any way scared of heights, it will take you by surprise how high you actually go on this ride. Um, every time I ride it, I kind of get surprised again that I'm terrified at the top, but just it's the same ride as it was before. So if you were scared before, you'll be scared again. I can tell you that from experience. But here's a little tip, ride it at sunset because it's really, really nice to be able to look down, see all the lights coming on, see that great view of the mountains in California. And you get a view of the whole park. It's really, really beautiful. And of course, Toy Story Midway Mania is still here on Pixar Pier, same as it was on Paradise Pier. And it's still the same great ride, that 3D adventure where you can slingshot your way to glory playing against the people in your car. Couple of rides coming soon, coming in 2019. The Emotional Whirlwind is of course gonna come over to Inside Out Headquarters. This will be a basically a kid's ride. It's gonna be like a, you know, kind of like the swings where it spins around, but you're just kind of on swings. That's coming at, to the western end of Pixar Pier in 2019. It's gonna be Inside Out themed, of course. And then Jesse's Critter Carousel will be coming in 2019. And I really think it's fun that right now on Pixar Pier, here, they have this sign that says it is on pre-order from Al's Toy Barn and it'll be delivered in 2019. This one is going to have 56 critter friends that you can ride. This is basically the revamp of the old carousel and it's going to have things like snakes and buzzards and skunks and raccoons. It's going to be a blast. So that'll be a fun kids ride as well coming soon. Next up, let's talk about the food, of course. There actually is a lot of new options on Pixar Pier. So over 
over on Pixar Pier itself, over on the boardwalk area, you're gonna find four specific kiosks. The first one is Angry Dogs, and this is the old hot dog stand that they've turned into Angry Dogs, which is themed to anger from inside out. And the options here are gonna be a spicy all beef hot dog, which they actually serve with a bag of hot Cheetos, which is fun because the whole theme here is that your hot dogs can get hotter and hotter and hotter like anger gets hotter and hotter and hotter in the film. So you can get your spicy LB hot dog. You can also get a slightly annoyed dog, it's called, which is not as spicy with potato chips. A cool addition here that we didn't know was going to happen was they have different sauces to add to your hot dog. Of course, they have mustard and ketchup, but they also have buffalo hot sauce and a brown mustard as well. So these are labeled as different levels of heat. So the hot buffalo sauce is called raging the brown mustard is agitated the yellow mustard is displeased and the ketchup is labeled as keeping it together next up is senor buzz churros this is themed of course to buzz lightyear himself this is the old churro stand of course here you can get the caliente churro which is red like tastes kind of like red hots basically or the cinnamon sugar galaxy churro which is your standard churro but it does have that bakery bling glitter on it so that it's kind of glittery. (laughs) All right, over at Poultry Palace, this is the old turkey leg stand. This is themed, if you didn't know, of course, to Small Fry, that Pixar short. You can get chicken drumsticks in a box. So there's three chicken drumsticks in a box with coleslaw. And then, of course, you can get a turkey leg and you can also get corn on the cob here. The chicken drumsticks are kind of like shake and bake, basically, is the best way we figured out to describe it. It kind of tastes like shake and bake. It's fine. Like, they're all right, but there's not a whole lot of flavor there. It's probably not what I would recommend to grab when you're over at Pixar Pier. But if you know, if you're a shake and bake fan, go for it. (laughs) It's nothing wrong with shake and bake, but this actually has even less flavor than shake and bake. So hopefully that makes sense. Over at Jack Jack's Cookie Num Nums, this is a brand new stand. This used to be where you would get your photos after California Screamin'. So this is right after Incredicoaster. And it's themed to Jack Jack and his favorite snack. So there are three cookie options here. There are Jack Jack's Cookie Num Num itself, which is a giant brown butter chocolate chip cookie, which is just gorgeous and very, very delicious. Comes out very warm when you purchase it. There's the gluten-friendly Incredi cookie, which is cute. It's got Jack Jack on top. And then there's the Jack Jack shortbread cookie, which is kind of a big thumbprint cookie. If you've ever had a thumbprint shortbread cookie, it's very soft, very thick, very moist. I really, really enjoyed it. It's really good. And then, of course, you can get a bunch of milk here as well. They have strawberry, chocolate, soy, vanilla, almond, and 2%. So you, everyone can have milk with their cookies. Another location they'll be selling food will be Bing Bong's Sweet Stuff. This one is opening later this summer. This is basically going to be the confectionery now, the confectionery over here at Pixar Pier. They're going to have rainbow cotton candy, which we got to try. It's sort of vanilla flavored. So it's not really rainbow flavored or fruit flavored. It's just vanilla flavored. They're going to have, of course, Bing Bong's own Sweet Candy Tears, which is going to be sort of a Goofy's Glacier kind of thing from what I can tell. They'll have specialty exclusive cake pops, including including um, inside out themed cake pops. They will have exclusive caramel apples here as well. And when I say exclusive, I mean they'll only be sold here at Bing Bongs. This is the only place you'll be able to get them. So they'll have exclusive caramel apples, including one that looks like Bing Bong himself. And then they'll also be selling a new line of Pixar themed bagged candy and popcorn. And these are right now being sold at Nick Snacks, which is over there on Pixar Pier until Bing Bongs is open. So it's sour rainbow belt, strawberry licorice wheels, all kinds of cool stuff like that that are themed to Pixar characters. And they'll, they also have some Bing Bong branded taffy, strawberry banana, Neapolitan, watermelon, lots of different taffy flavors that are only going to be sold over there at Bing Bongs. And another food item is the adorable snowman frosted treats. Uh, Of course, this is themed to the Yeti in Monsters, Inc. This is lemon Dole Whip, basically. And they have two really popular items, the Pixar Pier Frosty Parfait, which is lemon Dole Whip swirled with kind of a raspberry slush, basically, a blue raspberry slush. So that one's pretty good and very popular. And then they also have the snow-capped lemon, which is a cone with white chocolate drizzled on top. And that one's my favorite. I think that one's really, really good. So I would even pick that over the parfait. But they also have chocolate soft serve here. They have vanilla soft serve and they have the root beer float as well, randomly. 
All right, now let's head over to Lamplight Lounge. It used to be Cove Bar and Ariel's Grotto, and now it's a cohesive one restaurant. Lamplight Lounge downstairs can be reserved with an advanced dining reservation, and upstairs is still first come, first serve. So it's the same kind of concept that the other two restaurants were, but it's just all themed the same thing. So this one is themed to Pixar artists and Imagineers and kind of the process of creating a Pixar film. So you walk right in and the first thing you see is this incredible chandelier that pays homage to the story creating process, features sketches and a few blank pieces of paper to signify the beginning of the story. This is really fun. It kind of reminds me of Art of Animation. If anybody's been to Art of Animation over there in Disney World, you've seen this kind of chandelier. It's the same concept. So the walls and decor showcase all kinds of Pixar Easter eggs, mementos of the story development process, animated film production, and more. And the story is that the chairs themselves in the restaurant are from Pixar Studios. So it's really, really fun. Look around all of the walls. Look for the sight jokes and the secrets hiding around the walls and decor. There's so much going on here. Even the bathrooms and the coasters get on the fun. Check out the bathroom signage here. And then the coasters that you get with your drinks are sketched coasters and they actually have a couple of blank ones so you can sketch yourself. The food here is really fresh and kind of exciting. I'm I'm impressed with the menu for sure. They did bring back the famous lobster nachos from Cove Bar that everybody loves. You can get those upstairs and downstairs. And a couple of new items that we loved were the spicy ginger chili piggy wings. Those were great. And the new potato skins are probably the hands down winner for everybody I've talked to. The potato skins are awesome. So definitely get those when you're over there at Lamplight Lounge. The drink menu here is really fresh. I really enjoyed it. Everybody knows that the secret Cove Bar drink menu was a huge fan favorite. I didn't see any of those drinks or anything like them back on the menu, but a lot of the bartenders are probably holdovers from Cove Bar and they might be able to make those for you if you ask for them, but they're not currently on the menu. That said, the drink menu here is really fun and really innovative as well. We tried a bunch and we couldn't find a dud. The big the big fan favorites though, I think are gonna be the sequel and the Infinity Fizz. These are both made with a jet chill machine, which is a machine that kind of preps the cups with dry ice at the bottom so that the drinks kind of bubble and smoke for a good amount of time. Like it's not, it, it doesn't end really quickly. They're, they're, you know, you can get some good video and pictures of that. So those are kind of fun. The two that we tried where, like I said, the sequel, that one is alcohol-based. You've got some citron vodka in there. And then the Infinity Fizz is non-alcoholic. It's really fun. So the kids can get in on that as well. The Infinity Fizz, just so you know, is Powerade, apple juice, and those cherry flavored popping pearls. So I, I know it sounds like it would be bad, but it's actually really good. I really enjoyed it. And don't forget also in Lamplight Lounge, there is a secret dining room. We wrote all about this over on Disney Food Blog a couple of days ago. There is a really secret hidden dining room that you're just not gonna see unless you ask about it. This one is gonna have to be booked specially through the manager. They haven't finished it yet. It's not ready to go, but you know, eventually if you do have a private party, you, you may be able to book this secret dining room. It's called the office. And to get in, there's a vault that you have to figure out how to open the door. Here's a little, here's a tip. You actually just have to turn the wheel and light up all three lights and then you can get in. It seats only 13 people. And like I said, it's not finished yet, but here are a few pictures of inside. All right, we're down to the boardwalk games. So heading over to the boardwalk part of Pixar Pier, of course, they brought games back. They've got Heimlich's Candy Corn Toss, They've got the Wally Space Race, the La Luna Star Catcher, which I think your kiddos are really gonna like, and then the Bullseye Stallion Stampede. These are all really fun. I love the theming and I thought they were a blast to watch. And then finally, Nick Snacks, which is the big kind of store or shop up at the entryway to Pixar Pier. This is where you're gonna get all your Pixar goodies. I, of course, had to buy a whole bunch of those giant stuffed bing bongs because they're so adorable. I got a whole bunch of them. I shipped them all to my house. What's cool about this is that there's an animator working right in the store, so you can kind of watch them create while you're shopping, which is a blast. So anyway, that's a little short tour of Pixar Pier. We loved it. We had so much fun, and we can't wait to hear what you think. Please let us know in the comments your thoughts. Have you been to Pixar Pier? What would you be excited to visit if you were there or if you have been there? Let us know. We can't wait to hear from you. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.